When I ask new gym goers, what's your why for wanting to start a new fitness journey, the most popular answer I receive might surprise you. It's not to be a bodybuilder, it's not to run a marathon, it's not to lose 100 pounds, and it's not to make an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend jealous because you finally achieved your revenge body. Instead, the most common motivation I've heard to the question, why do you want this so bad, is simply this. It's time to put myself first. My name's Mike Stanlaw. I'm a personal trainer, and I make people sweat for a living. Don't worry, I'm not here to make you do 50 push-ups. Instead, I'm here to talk to you about reframing and rethinking exercise as an ultimate form of self-care, not just as a means of getting stronger and looking better. To throw an interesting fact your way about self-care, did you know that one in every three people actually feel guilty for taking some time for themselves? I should know, I was one of them. Back in 2015, when I opened my fitness studio, I actually felt that if I wasn't training clients one-on-one, -on -one, if I wasn't teaching group exercise classes, if I wasn't promoting on social media, or if I wasn't doing one of the thousand tasks it takes to run a business, that I was being a bad business owner. I felt that by taking some self-care time for me and by exercising on my own in my own studio, that I was being selfish. A personal trainer that felt guilty for exercising. There's some irony for you. Yes, running a business takes some time and energy, but I quickly found that by not taking care of myself, by not getting my own workouts in, I was actually losing energy. I was losing confidence. I was feeling hypocritical. And worst of all, I was starting to resent training clients because, hey, they were getting their workouts in, and I was being a slacker. I had to go back to the one fundamental activity that made me who I am. I had to go back to the one fundamental activity that made me want to start a business and help people in the first place. I had to start my day, every day, with my favorite form of self-care, physical fitness. By doing this, I quickly learned that I was better for myself during the day, and I was better for others. Besides, nobody likes a cranky personal trainer. Not long after this whole fitness dilemma of mine, came one of my most pivotal moments and biggest realizations. It wasn't when I discovered the awesomeness of protein powder. I came across a startling statistic that stated that only 5% of Americans get the recommended 30 minutes of physical activity daily. 5%. This absolutely blew my mind, and I almost immediately made Get Your 30 our studio motto and my personal message to all. Get Your 30 meaning get a minimum of 30 minutes of physical activity daily for your physical and your mental health. 30 minutes, 2% of your day. Get Your 30 isn't just a catchy slogan. It has to be a way of life. So just how important is getting your 30? How important is self-care? Back in the pandemic of 2020, like many other businesses, our studio was shut down for a little bit. We were closed down for four months. And in these four months, you'd be amazed by how many of our members would reach out to me and tell me how much they missed the gym and how much they needed fitness for their physical and for their mental health. Many were anxious, lonely, scared, or depressed. They needed fitness. My phone was filled with text messages about this from our members. The other text messages were from people I haven't heard from in years asking me to borrow my workout equipment. Hey, point being, people needed fitness. And during this time, there's one particular story that stood out to me the most. A good friend and client of mine named Angela 
was doing one-on-one -on -one FaceTime personal training sessions with me. Now, as you know, training in person, or almost anything in person, was a big no-no at this time. And I spent a lot of time training clients like this. So one particular Saturday morning, 7 o'clock AM, Angela and I are getting ready to train. I call her up like I normally would. She answers like normal. Only something was very different about this day. Instead of reaching for her weights like she normally would, Angela simply tells me, I'm sorry, I can't do this today. I'm completely unmotivated, and I can't train. Uh, there wasn't even time for a motivational pep talk. We both said goodbye and hung up. I knew that Angela had been slowly going into a downward slope in her, her fitness and in her mindset over the last few months. But after eight long years of training together, I was afraid that Angela was going to tell me any day now that she wanted to quit personal training and she wanted to give up on her fitness journey altogether. What had happened? At one point, Angela was a marathon runner who regularly logged 20 to 40 miles per week. At one point, Angela was one of my most energetic and enthusiastic clients who had been at all of our fitness studio events, all of our photo shoots, a woman who at one point had lost 115 pounds. What had happened? And why this downward spiral? As scary as this is going to sound, what happened to Angela can happen to every single person listening. And maybe it has. 60 to 70 hour work weeks had led to extreme stress. Extreme stress had led to bad eating and drinking. Bad eating and drinking had led to further inactivity, overwhelm, and depression. She stated that she was simply surviving the weeks and living for weekends and vacations, which she knew really wasn't living at all. Angela had referred to her eating and drinking as self-medicating, and I'm sure it took the edge off in the moment, but the truth is Angela was slowly but surely killing herself. Her self-control and her self-care had both reached rock bottom. This was a tough time in Angela's life. But what she didn't do is she didn't quit on her personal training. She didn't quit on her fitness journey. Angela and I had a long talk about what we needed to do to pull her out of this dark place and get her back to being her former self again. If this were a Rocky movie, this is where the training montage would cue. <laughs> the personal trainer makes a Rocky reference. Go figure. But, but Angela and I got after it. We bumped our training sessions up from two times a week to three times a week. She started slowly getting back to her running. Angela started sending me food logs via email about what she'd been consuming during the week. She started taking yoga for her flexibility and for her peace of mind. And she started talking to a therapist about ways to better manage her stress that did not involve food and alcohol. Angela had my support. She had her therapist's support. And she had the support of her husband, Paul, whom she refers to as her rock. Little by little, things got better for Angela. It didn't happen overnight, but she started slowly losing weight, and she started regaining her mental clarity. The biggest comeback, though, was in 2021. We held a transformation challenge at our studio, and out of 30 people that participated, Angela took first place. Yes, she won some cool prizes, but more importantly, she had lost 65 pounds. She had regulated her numbers. She had regained her energy and her enthusiasm that she once had. So this was more than just a physical transformation. This was a mindset transformation as well. The old Angela that I knew was back and this was redemption. 
If you're still playing the Rocky theme in your head, you're good. You can stop now. You're good. Listen, everyone at one point or another has had a hectic, crazy, stressful day, week, month, or even year. This isn't the introduction to a Friends episode. This is real life. This is your life. Work, bills, commuting, family issues, trying to remember all your internet passwords. <laughs> you can't simply snap your fingers and make these things disappear. You can't decide in the middle of a traffic jam with a screaming toddler in the back while you're late for an appointment that, I think I'm gonna take a minute and practice some self-care right now. I'm gonna take a break, take a minute, take some time for myself. It doesn't quite work that way. You can't call a timeout in life, but what you can do is you could decide to start your day with some self-care so that you're better equipped to handle these situations as they arise. So what exactly is self-care? What comes to mind? Massage, spa day, relaxing car ride, talking with a therapist, a mani-pedi, my wife's favorite. Or is it the place you can go to nowadays, take a baseball bat and smash all sorts of objects in a room when you're feeling angry and stressed out? Hey, whatever works, right? The World Health Organization defines self-care as what people do for themselves to establish and maintain health and to prevent and deal with illness. Now, there's all different types of self-care, emotional, mental, spiritual self-care. But I personally believe that physical self-care is the absolute best form of self-care you can practice. Now, I know I'm a little biased, given my profession and all, but hear me out. Physical self-care ties in with all of the above. It ties in with your mental, emotional, your spiritual self-care. And think of all the amazing benefits of exercise. Yes, there's all the visible benefits we've all come to know and love. Weight loss, strength gain, muscular definition, improved endurance, but there's a benefit that goes well below the surface. That's even more important than just being physically strong. Exercise makes you mentally strong because it improves your mindset and it improves your outlook on things. Exercise doesn't change external situations, it changes how we view them. Exercise doesn't change external situations, it changes how we view them. Angela's story is so important because it's reflective of the direction many of us find ourselves going in from time to time. And it's a constant reminder that we all need self-care daily. Life can change in an instant. If you're not taking care of yourself, you'll be less equipped to handle the twists and turns. Angela will be the first to tell you she still has her ups and downs with fitness and with life. We all do. A client asked me one time, wouldn't it be great if fitness results were like a diploma that once you get them, you simply get to keep them? Sadly, it doesn't work that way. Zig Ziglar said it best, motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. You have to work on your self-care every single day. Think about how many of us mindlessly go through the rat race daily, stressed from work deadlines, financial hardships, family obligations, trying to please everyone else, but putting ourselves dead last. And now think about how amazing it would be to start the day on your terms, with your own self-care, so that you run the day instead of hitting the snooze button 13 times and allowing the day to run you. Once you begin the day by getting your 30, once you begin the day with your own self-care, that's one small victory. Your brain will automatically start to think, what can I conquer next? And then once you begin to stack these small wins, they slowly build up, and this leads to having great days through self-care. Exercise doesn't change external situations, it changes how we view them. I want to challenge you to get your 30 every single day for your own self-care, for your physical and your mental health, 
and for your loved ones. Thank you so much.